and welcome to another Fox vlog. I'm Kel E. Fox, author, artist, and here to update you. It feels like it's been so long, but I am super excited. I'm excited. Some of you may have this experience of writing novels, if you write novels or making some other creative thing, I don't know, but basically it starts out like fun idea, and you're up here with this idea being like, yeah, it's really cool, and it's a launch pad spot, and you roll down the hill, and it's all fun and exciting, like sledding or something and then you have a bit of momentum and you roll along and some rocks and some bounces and you know wing off you go that's fine and then you go up a little hill you're like that's okay creative work is hard and then you realize that that little hill is actually a fucking mountain and up you go and up you go and up you go and up you go and you are struggling to kind of push this ball up a hill that is about to try and roll back and crush you at any moment and then you finally see the summit and you get to the top and actually it wasn't the summit it was a little bump in the incline and you go down a little hollow where you lose all your momentum and then you've got to go back up again and then you hit another little bump and then you fall in another little hole and then you go back up again and at some point the ball is just far too heavy it's a giant boulder of granite and it rolls back over and flattens you and lands in the bump again and off that's my experience of the creative process with writing novels, at least for the last one, and it has just been a whole year of like slogging up this mountain that at times I was like, I think I've just broken this book, I don't think I'm going to get there. But anyway, the thing is, once you get to the other side of the mountain, in my experience, for the most part, it's a downhill run. There's no more bumps and things, it's just you've finally got the momentum you need to pull the whole story together and it flies down the bottom. I'm there. Secrets is there, thank goodness. So that's really exciting and I'm looking forward to finishing that, but also not because for as long as I'm still writing the ending, that whole delicious feeling of rolling down the hill with the story that is now finally working is, is wonderful and when I get to the end, well, then I have to find the next mountain to climb. That is exciting. Also making progress on the art for Secrets. So the big plan for all of this, which I have mentioned, is that I'm going to do a Kickstarter campaign for an illustrated edition of this story, The Secrets We Save, which is romantic gaslight fantasy set in a magical city in another world. The story got dark. They always do. Why are the children always involved? I don't know. Anyway, it's it's got some angst and some grimness. It's not probably as grim as Lightless. Not quite. Donovan is pretty grim. That's all right, because it's still a beautiful story. It's all about lies and secrets and the truth of things and what actually is the truth of things and how can we know and how that shapes both an individual life and a society so it's kind of cool i love it i'm really excited about the illustrations i've finished the very first illustration so that's coming together that's secrets for context, if you're interested in the secrets writing process, uh, Lightless Prophecy is some six novels. I haven't written the last books and I've published the first books. And the challenge with that now is that those things are kind of set on paper, which is more permanent than it sounds. And unless I want to completely go back and sort of pull those books from publication and change things and then republish, which, you know, I suppose we, there's no law saying I can't do that. Uh, but I don't want to. <laughs> so if I can make it all work and come together with the existing canon staying as it is, that would be ideal. The challenge will be is if I think of something that would have been better, or rather my brilliant partner who comes up with amazing plot solutions thinks of something that would have been better and I can't do it because of what I've already published in the early books, that's going to really annoy me. But that's okay, that's how we learn. So for this series, the Whisperer series, I decided to Plot out the whole series in advance, that way I would know whether or not it was going to fit into three or four or five books or whatever, uh, and then write it. Actually draft the entire series before publishing book one, which was ambitious, and I don't know how I thought I was going to get that done in the first six months of last year, but I didn't. That's okay. I'm nearly done with it now, and I've written the first, the three books and a novella, which was a short story. There's a pattern here. First book written, second book written, drafts, rough drafts. Third book has been so hard. Maybe that's just ending a series. 
Or maybe it's just a third book thing for me because Memory Weave was also really hard to write. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy with where this series is going. I think it probably could have been four books, but it won't be. Uh, it might be a longer third book, and that's great. I love it when you have a series of like the first book, the second book, and then all oh, the third book's really long. It's first, second, third. They get longer and longer, and it's so good. Dust. Her book's are so dusty. I'm sure they just exude it. So that has been taking up most of my energy. I have the one mask ball I am digging back into. That's dark, but almost like in a delicious way. So when a book is not really meant to be all that dark and then it has these moments of real sort of angst and horror, it hits really hard. And I find with one mask ball, the darkness is more of a mood. And so you expect it. It's not quite as shocking or horrific. It still is awful, obviously, and for the characters it's nasty, but as an experience to write it, at least. And I feel also when I'm reading books that are framed as being much darker, you can relax into it a little bit. You're not kind of being horrified at every turn because you know what to expect. One Last Ball is kind of deliciously dark in that way. But it's also a bit of a mess. I'm tidying that up. I have a new story idea. I know I'm not meant to, I know I've got enough going on, I've got three series going on, but I think as much as I say I like to work on one project at a time, at, at a, uh, as much as I like to say I want to work on one project at a time, I think actually I like having multiple stories on the go at once. And the thing is, when you have something that is like super angsty, like Whisperer's is, and something super dark, like One Masked Ball, and then I've got the Lightless Prophecy going in the background, which is just epic. So they're all very different brain spaces. And sometimes you want to write in a different space. I had an idea, or rather I was handed an idea by uh, the illustrious postal service in Australia uh, that sent me this sort of tracking information. And it was like some kind of internal manifesto of every single little step that had gone through this parcel delivery, which was ridiculous, by the way. It got to Perth, wherever it gets off the plane. You would think, given that I don't live that far from the airport, that it could go from that processing facility to the next processing facility in my area, somewhere on the fairly straight line of highway that runs between where I live and where it got off the plane, there was another processing facility that it stopped at in the middle of the afternoon, presumably for snacks. So I thought, why not write satire on the global postal service around the world? Because based on what I've seen, Australia is not alone in this regard of parcels not able to be delivered while you're at home listening for the doorbell. And there's some kind of interdimensionality involved here. It seemed like a fun story anyway. It sounds terrible when I put it like that. But basically, I have an interdimensional courier who is something of a disaster in her own personal life, but is very good at what she does, except for the fact that often her paycheck disappears in between dimensions, and shenanigans. No plot in this regard, it'll just be like parcels going missing, and who knows. So that'll be fun. I haven't actually started it yet, but this character has been kicking around in my head for a long time waiting for a story, and I think this is her story. So excited about telling that. It's just going to be a casual when I need something that is a break from the angst and the darkness and the epicness that is my other project and I just want something fun and silly and you know what if there's giant plot holes well it's an interdimensional postal service of course there's giant plot holes you would expect it to be that way it would be wrong if it wasn't so I don't have to worry theoretically about the plot. I feel for some reason like it's the end of March and I've missed like months or weeks of work but it's not we're in the last part of February so there's still time in summer which current temperatures in Perth kind of won't mind when that's over. I feel bad that I have not continued the podcast yet but it will happen. <sighs> so here's the thing with Lightless. It is actually 20 stories at last count. <laughs> I think it's 20. Uh, not quite all of those are written yet. Six of them obviously are the main novels. Um, and then there's a bunch of other stories in between and around it, one of which has already been published in another anthology several years ago that I will re-release in a collection uh, with other lightless stories. And another one which actually got shortlisted for a prize last year, which was kind of cool, even though I haven't finished it yet. There's a lot going on in that world, and 
as much as I want to push on and get the fourth book finished, I'm also mindful of how difficult it will be to end that series if I haven't got the whole story pulled together in my head. I think it is actually time to bring some of the other stories out, other characters who have points of view and things to say and parts to play that are really important to the overall picture of it. I am trying to make it so that you don't have to read the novellas and the short stories. There's no short stories. There might be a couple that are necessary. There are certainly going to be a lot added to the world if you love reading that sort of story where it's expansive. The first one is The Inheritance Experiment, which is the one that has been published before a few years ago. That is a short story, amazingly, that also won a little award, so that was nice. That's about Donovan's origins. And now we're going to get into some little spoilers for Darkhaven, so skip ahead if that is not something that you are ready for yet. Uh, the rebuilding of Darkhaven. I have a short story about that where Salt is a very naughty boy. And I have a story that is Charon and what happened to him when he was supposed to be fixing things for Gabby's decision about whether or not to reverse the event that she'd just experienced and why he didn't get back to her. Which is just him being reckless and foolish and silly and it's kind of lighthearted, but it also hints at some sort of issues in Caron's part. Those stories, I think, are the next things that will come out for Lightless. They will be released on Ream for early access. And then eventually, once all those stories are on Ream and I've got a really good handle on what page lengths are and how big these things will be, then I'll know how to split them up into actual books that I can print and distribute for those who want to have them on their bookshelves. Because obviously a 5,000 word short story doesn't make a book. This has gotten really rambly. So onwards, I suppose, with finishing off this whole Whisperer's Saga uh, draft and then digging back into the edits for Secrets. I think given how hard this book was to write, it will be easier in the edits. That is sort of my experience so far is that each novel will have a sticking point. And the big thing that I've found is that actually, you know, like you expect that you will have your own process and that there are as many ways of writing a book as there are authors. And I have always kind of believed that and gone, OK, well, I'll take each person's advice with a little pinch of salt because some of it will stick to me and some of it won't. And it doesn't mean it was bad advice. It just means that it didn't work for me. Right. Uh, but I think actually that is not quite true in that it's not that there are as many methods as there are authors. It is that there are as many ways to write a book as there are books. Each one of them is quite different. I have been trying for the last few years to really nail down what is my process? How do I need to do this? Because lots of authors talk about their process, you know. What is it that you do first? Do you outline? Do you discovery write? Do you sit down and brainstorm for a while? How long do you spend in each of the plotting, outlining, drafting, revising, editing phases? And everyone sort of talks as if they have the same process for each book. But I'm starting to think that actually... You will have a process. Obviously, you can't edit something you haven't written. So, you know, to some extent, there has to be some way of proceeding and putting words on the page. Trying to force the whisperers to fit into what I was trying to turn into my process for writing based on how Lightless went, which is a completely different series, was holding me back a lot. While Lightless, I am having to write very much in order. As soon as I realise that this event happened here, I need to go and write that down before I proceed with the story because otherwise I'm going to get to the end and find that there are a lot of holes. Whisperer series has been much more piecemeal. I know what happens here, so write that, expand outwards a little bit. Some of it will be going back to write earlier scenes, some of it will be going forwards, I write a later scene, that then tells me what I need to have put in before, so I can go back and do that. It's very much more of a back and forth process, which I resisted for so long because I was like, no, I need to write linearly, that's what I discovered with Lightless. And it's changed. Be open, I suppose. If you are trying to write a novel or a series and you are struggling with your process, be mindful that your process might just change from one project to the next. I will go on and keep drafting and keep painting and share some of the painting stuff. I have been recording bits of it, so I will put that up as soon as I figure out how to make that work. And if you enjoy the vlogs, if you want to keep hearing about either my creative process and how that feels and how it works, or you're interested in the stories and the art, then please do like, subscribe, follow with the notification bell, all that stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.